Cadillac has too many sedans at a time when customers want crossovers. There's a sporty, agile one, there's a big, cushy one, and there's an in-betweener. That's where the CT6 comes in, blending the driving character of the CTS with the relaxed, calm demeanor of the XTS. This is the closest Cadillac has come to challenging Germany. How does it look? Arguably the most graceful application of Cadillac's current design language, the CT6 wears its clean, angular styling well. We like the overall look and appreciate that Cadillac toned down the aggression to create something that's more elegant than angry. We wish more automakers would do the same. How's the storage? The CT6 is a big American sedan, but it doesn't really haul like one. There's only 15.3 cubic feet of cargo space, and the rear seats don't fold down at all. Normally when we're filming our time lapse, you get multiple different configurations for these three pieces of away luggage. This time, there were two. That's it. That's all we could fit in there. Ample door pockets and a decent center console mean plenty of space for storage. We like the positioning of the two front cup holders, but they could be a smidge bigger. Good on Cadillac for skipping the CTS's motorized cup holder lid. The flip cover here looks and feels fine. Is it roomy? There's acres of space in the four main seats, but the driver is the one getting gypped. The seating position is bizarre, and the telescopic steering wheel doesn't come out far enough. Drivers with longer legs suffer from the odd seating position. How does the interior feel? Overall material quality is good, but the design is a, a little schizophrenic. You got leather here and here and wood trim here and carbon fiber here and in a car that's kind of like a person wearing plaid shorts, a polka dot shirt and contrasting shades of fluorescent. The CT6 isn't the first Cadillac to get this jarring, incoherent collection of materials, but it is the most egregious example. This black leather upholstery does hide it a little bit, but not much. Is it well equipped? The CT6 is fantastically well equipped. Our range topping platinum model has virtually every feature we could think of, from ventilated 20-way massaging front seats, to magnetic ride control, to GM's fantastic Super Cruise driver assistance system. The 34 speaker Bose Panerai audio system is among the best we've ever heard. There's not much more we could ask for in terms of gear. How's the infotainment system? Cadillac's infotainment system has gotten better of late, but the CT6 still suffers from some oddities. A touchpad interface works alongside the traditional touchscreen, giving drivers an alternative place to input commands, but it's not especially good, responding slowly and inaccurately to our inputs. The touchscreen works better, and Cadillac has done a fair job of simplifying how the driver controls the CT6's various systems. Is it a good daily driver? Like most big luxury sedans, the CT6 is a fine daily driver. The ride is comfortable and quiet. The seat, despite the kind of wonky seating position, is quite comfortable. I'd happily while away a boring rush hour drive in this thing. But its headlining feature is Super Cruise, GM's new semi-autonomous driving assistance system. And it works like this. You have to have all the active safety nannies on, so lane keeping assist and all that stuff. Then you have to turn on the adaptive cruise control, and we'll set it at a nice reasonable 60 miles an hour. And then I wait for a little logo in here, a little steering wheel logo to show up, and all I have to do then is, if I remember how to do it, this middle button right here turns on Super Cruise. I get a green light right here, and as you're about to see as we go through some corners on I-75 here, I don't really have to do anything. I can sit here, my hands are off the uh, steering wheel, my feet are off the throttle and the brake, and the car does all the driving for us. This is really, really good 
for freeway driving. You can't use it anywhere else because it relies on GPS mapping and other data. But if your commute involves a lot of freeway work, a lot of boring drudgery, this is, this is the way to do it. There are some, some holdups. You have to be looking straight ahead. There are cameras right here that will watch you and make sure that you're not looking away. So if I look to focus on this camera, eventually it's going to warn me because it, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. I haven't really tried to see how long it takes to do this, but up oh, now I'm getting vibrations in my seat and a flashing red light. Super Cruise disengaging, take vehicle control. So I have control of the vehicle again. Super Cruise icon shows back up. I can turn the system back on. And just like that, the car is doing the driving again. Is it fun to drive? The CT6 is a big luxury car, so it shouldn't come as much shock that it's not terribly fun to drive. Yes, you have a twin turbocharged three liter V6 with around 400 horsepower and around 400 pound feet of torque. That's plenty. I can get up and go without much trouble. But the speed isn't super urgent. It's not aggressive in the way that it arrives. This is not a V-Sport. This is a CT6. Thanks to GM's magnetic dampers, you can set the ride to a firmer setting at the press of a button, which I'll do right now. But all it really does is make things a little bit less comfortable. The reality is that even in the sport mode, the CT6 is not a stunning handling car. It's relaxed, it rolls through turns, it doesn't feel particularly pointy or aggressive in the way that it handles. The steering is fine, it's, it's light, it is very, very stable at speed, but it doesn't offer any feedback at all. You're kind of just playing guessing games about what the front wheels are doing. And it's the same through the seat. But again, this is a luxury sedan. It's not designed to be fun to drive. It's designed to be comfortable. And in that regard, it does really well. How's the fuel economy? The range-topping twin-turbocharged 3.0-liter V6 in our test car returns an EPA-estimated 18 miles per gallon city and 26 mpg highway, although it does require premium fuel. How much is it? Prices for the CT6 start at a very agreeable $54,095, but our Platinum test model adds just over $34,000 to that figure for a total of $88,295, not including a $995 destination charge. It's still less than some German rivals, but not by much. Fortunately, Cadillac offers a number of trims between the base and the Platinum for customers not looking to drop nearly 90 large on their big sedan. What are the negatives? Our CT6 has the price of a luxury flagship, but it never really reaches the same levels of pomp and circumstance as the German competition. There are also more affordable Cadillacs that offer a similar driving experience and a similar level of technology. We're also not fans of the awkward seating position or the limited cargo hold in the CT6. Who should buy it? The Cadillac CT6 is a fine luxury sedan, but customers have no shortage of options in that category. Instead, this car will appeal to customers that spend most of the commute on the freeway. It's a sublime high-speed cruiser thanks to its excellent ride, advanced active safety systems, and absurdly powerful 34-speaker stereo.